The Emperor of Universe 7 arrives on the battlefield. With a terrifying power level of 560,000, in his first form alone, he could take out the entirety of the Z Fighters with absolutely no sweat. There's nothing they can do to him even all working together. The only strategy they have right now is to wait for Goku. Although, after a couple minutes of what appears to just be a needless slaughter, eventually somebody would arrive to their aid, although it isn't Goku. Instead, it's Piccolo, the Namekian warrior coming from Earth who has now fused with Nail, having arrived on Namek and come in contact with the defender of Guru, who was left bloody on the floor. Wanting to defend his planet one last time in any way he could, Nail would give up his own life to give Piccolo the power to stand a chance against Frieza. Yes, it's a forbidden technique and it does go against everything the Namekians stand for, but right now, they can't stand for anything. The Namekians have nearly gone extinct, and if Nail can preserve their species in the form of Piccolo, then he'll do everything he can to accomplish that. And with a staggering power level of 1 million, Piccolo is actually able to take on Frieza in his first and even second forms. And after arriving to help the present Z Fighters, Piccolo is drastically stronger than Frieza's first form, which had just been tearing apart the group a moment ago. And even Frieza's second form is only matching Piccolo's current strength, so he has to amp it up to his third form. But this is overkill. The group stands no chance against this monster, and even Piccolo's incredible power seems subpar in comparison. But now, basking in the feeling of superiority once again, Frieza decides to allow them a fitting death. They had been a problem in his backside for the past couple of days, and for some of them for the past couple of years. So he gives them a death worthy of such problems. Going into his final and most powerful transformation, his true final form. At least until Resurrection F. While transforming, Piccolo would think to himself about how if he hadn't been such a sentimental fool, they would have all been alive right now. But feeling the power that Frieza is letting off, he can't even say that for certain. If they were to ever come to Earth, then there's no chance the Z Fighters could actually beat Frieza. Even with a thousand years of training, the Emperor is just too strong. So, trying to right his wrong, Piccolo powers up all the energy he has into one attack and launches it at the Emperor. Yet, it does nothing. While transforming, he's already too strong. But while Piccolo is wasting his time and wasting his power, Vegeta had come up with a plan to manipulate his own biology, use the Zenkai boost the Saiyan race has to be able to surge to new heights. He has Krillin damage him, which is substantially easier than in the original, and then, after being fatally wounded, having Dinde bring him back from the brink of death. With a staggering power level of 2 million, Vegeta is stronger than ever before, multiple times stronger than even that of Piccolo. An insurmountable wall leaped over in a single bound. However, when Frieza is done transforming, Vegeta stands no chance. Even with the Z Fighters at his aid, there is nothing that he could do against the monster that is Frieza. But realizing that if he were to pull that same trick again, he could get quite strong, Frieza kills Dende with a single attack. Now they're back to square one, waiting for Goku. But they don't even think he'll be enough to take on the demon in front of them. Vegeta does still have the ability to buy time though. His strength might be subpar in comparison to Frieza, absolutely nothing even, but it is still enough to entertain the Emperor in his final form. It's the closest thing he's ever got to a challenge outside of his own family. But eventually, Vegeta is yet again put on the brink of death, although this time there's no Dende to bring him back. And with Gohan and Krillin also in danger, Piccolo nowhere near capable of defending them, Goku finally springs into action, 
bursting out of the healing pod and rushing to the area where the fight is going down. However, when he gets there, he doesn't see a fight. He sees a slaughter. Dinde is dead on the ground, Vegeta close to it, and Piccolo, Gohan, and Krillin out of energy and out of hope. But now with Goku there, that hope is sparked up yet again. His power is extreme. In his base form alone, he's stronger than Vegeta. This might actually be enough to defeat Frieza. As he surges into the Akari form and proclaims that Frieza will not take any more innocent lives. But Frieza proclaims that no one here is truly innocent. Vegeta has killed his own fair share of planets, possibly more than Frieza has with his own hands. So if anything, the Emperor is doing a kindness to the universe by getting rid of that traitor. A terrorist, even. And anyone that aligns themselves with him is just as bad. But Goku isn't here for a debate of philosophies. Anyone that hurts his friends has got to go. So he immediately rushes in, landing a right hook on Frieza's cheek, sending him flying meters away. With a power level two times that of his original self, Goku and Akari is capable of pushing Frieza to use nothing less than 50% of his full power. Anything else and Goku would actually have an advantage. Goku is certainly an outlier from the rest of his weakling friends. Frieza would rush back into battle and would proclaim that Goku is the strongest opponent he has ever faced, aside from that of his father, King Cold. But either way, Goku is still a formidable challenge, and will be treated as such. Frieza demonstrates 60% of his full power. Here he is losing stamina, but nowhere near as quick as his full power would do. So now, being able to eclipse Goku's full strength, Frieza does still have an advantage, but Goku is able to make up for it with his incredible martial arts skills. Another difference between the two is that Goku has actually used his full power before. He has gone all out against several different opponents, whereas Frieza has never needed to even use his final form, so Goku definitely has an advantage in experience. Goku knows how to wield the power he has in his disposal, whereas Frieza just doesn't. Akari would still damage his stamina reserves, but Frieza is at far more of a disadvantage in terms of stamina usage. So even if he has a higher raw power output, and pretty much every other way, Goku is superior. And understanding this, Frieza would go to 100% right away, realizing that if he's supposed to win this battle, he can hold nothing back. And Goku is definitely being put on the back foot by this incredible power. However, after being shown countless Namekian villages destroyed, millions of innocent lives gone in the blink of an eye, Goku decides to risk his own life to defeat this monster bring him to justice for the crimes he has committed. But not just on this planet, on planet Vegeta, on every planet in his so-called army, every species that Frieza has caused to gone extinct, every civilian life he has taken, all of the innocence he has destroyed, Goku will not allow it any further. He shouts out Kaioken, before then largely exceeding Frieza's own power. Sure, the mere ten times. He shouts out Kaioken, a single word allowing him to match Frieza's own power. He is advantaged in every other way than strength, and now he is matching the Emperor's terrifying power. But every moment he uses this form, his body is being torn apart. Moment by moment, his muscles are breaking, so he decides to use a single Kamehameha to end it all. And although Frieza is still able to counter with a death ball, pushing the beam back, it isn't enough, as Goku shouts out, Kaioken times three. The beam engulfs the tyrant. And as Frieza's life is being brought to a close, he can hear Vegeta's voice ringing in the background. This is the power of a Super Saiyan. 
And with Frieza's chapter of this story being brought to a close, the Z Fighters on Namek would reunite. Back on Earth, Kami would wish back everybody killed by Frieza and his men. This would lead to all of the Namekians being brought back, except for those killed by Vegeta. But Vegeta himself is also brought back. So Vegeta will have to live with his sins crawling on his back. However, the Dragon Balls on Namek have also been restored, and they have one wish left on Purunga. And with the Dende thinking fast, he would wish for Elder Guru to have his youth restored. Now, not only will the Namekian people have their leader for another couple of decades, but the Dragon Balls will come back after a couple of months, so the Z Fighters, as long as they stick around for a while, will still be able to revive their friends. There was no reason to bring the Namekians to Earth in this scenario, and Tien and Chiaotzu are two separate people that couldn't be revived by one wish on Paranga at the current moment, so they'll have to wait a couple of months either way, except now Guru gets to stay alive, which is a major upside for the Namekian people. People. And for the Z Fighters, it means they're going to be able to get their wishes a bit faster, rather than waiting on Elder Mori to make a new Paranga. So for the next couple of months, what would the Z Fighters be getting up to? Well, Vegeta and Bulma would be starting a relationship, and Bulma would be creating a spaceship, one capable of bringing them back to Earth. Really, she's dividing her time half between sleeping with Vegeta and half between trying to bring them all back to their homeworld. And honestly, she's probably prioritizing the former rather than the latter. As for Goku and Gohan, together they would be exploring Namek. They would do some training every now and again, but it's a wonderful opportunity for Gohan, and Goku doesn't want to waste that for him. Gohan is interested with everything on Namek. It's an entirely new world, and Goku wouldn't want to ruin that experience for his son. Sure, he might prioritize training, but Gohan just doesn't, and it's not like there's any threat they're preparing for, so he lets Gohan just be a kid. And Piccolo would be exploring everything on Namek in his own way, since this is a culture that he feels like he should have been born into. He is a Namekian after all, and these are things he never got to experience despite the fact he's one of them. This is a place where he finally belongs, and he loves it, even though he will still return to Earth with the rest of the group because it is his home and he feels obligated to protect it, much like he did with Namek against Frieza. Honestly, he does kind of wish he could be at both places, since half of him wants to remain on Namek and defend it with everything he has, whereas the other half does still feel Earth is his home. Although, Elder Mori, with the aid of Guru, do come up with a solution to this problem. They've heard of a race of people who have the ability to teleport anywhere in the universe as long as they're able to sense a key signature. They're called the Yardradians, and if Piccolo were to go learn from these people, he could get the ability to teleport from Earth to Namek to even Yardrad if he wants to in no time at all. It's instantaneous transmission. And this is perfect for Piccolo. He now no longer needs to decide between Namek and Earth. He can accept both as his home and go from place to place instantaneously. So he boards a ship prepared by Bulma, repaired out of one of the Ginyu pods, and would set sail, well, set space sail for Yardrat, which it turns out was already a pre-programmed destination in these ships. Turns out the Ginyus are probably gonna go there. So while everybody else was waiting for the Dragon Balls to be restored, Piccolo would be training on Yardrat, learning techniques like instant transmission and force spirit fission. But eventually the time is up, and the Dragon Balls are now active again, so they would wish back their friends. First Tien, then Chiaotzu, and they'd only have a third wish, and yes, Vegeta would want immortality, but he understands, now having died, that the ability to die is what makes life precious, so he doesn't go through with it, instead just allowing for Paranga to scatter and for the Dragon Balls to restore earlier since they didn't use all three wishes. And now, with everything they set out to do finally accomplished, the Z Fighters would board Frieza's now-repaired ship, heading back to Earth that way, they can finally reconnect with the people they left behind there. Although, when they arrive, they are met by two incredibly fierce clashing powers. 
One being that of Trunks, a future warrior here to warn of a devastating new threat, and King Cold, the father of Frieza who was hinted at before. The power that King Cold has is absolutely terrifying. His strength is unrivaled even by that of his son, and somehow Trunks has surpassed it. He's able to easily defeat the mutant before then conversing with the group.